Hey everyone and welcome to a new video here on our channel. With this video I would like to start a little tutorial series where I show you all the mistakes I did back then around 6 years ago with my first own game but I will also share our secret strategies with you which helped us to successfully work on over 200 client projects over the past years and where we also was able to launch a couple of them. But first I would like to talk a bit about one of the most important steps in the process and at the same time one of the first things I I did wrong back then. Well, I wanted to build a full game completely alone without a team. Yeah, there are many indie developers out there and you can do good stuff there. But only if you already have years of experience or have a bunch of time. And also the projects all in all are usually a bit smaller. So if you're looking to recreate games like a Call of Duty or a GTA or want to make your own first RPG game, that will get hard to do alone or it will take forever, especially if you also have a job or a family to take care about. So let me share a bit of my own story there as well, which will yeah show you a little bit why it definitely makes sense to having some sort of like a team and also a realistic plan and why this is so important. So about six years ago, I had a dream of making my first own game there. And at this time, I always played a lot of games myself. But in every game, I noticed a few like bugs or things I didn't like. So I thought, well, it can't be so hard to make your own game. I thought, hey, I can handle all this stuff myself from creating the 3D modeling to the programming and all that stuff. But soon I realized just how much goes into game development. Each area, like the 3D modeling or coding, takes years to master itself. It's a huge amount of work there. And that's when I understood a good game needs people who know their stuff in specific areas. The takeaway you can take here is know your strengths but also know when to bring in other people to support you there. Sure, you can try doing everything there alone, but the quality usually suffers. And you will need a lot of time to master those needed skills there. That's why over time I built up a team of experts, each good at one part of the process. Having the right people not only brings in better skills, but also fresh ideas. But also building up this team back then wasn't easy as well. Because you can basically find freelancers everywhere on Fiverr and in forums and all that stuff, but it's hard to identify the really reliable developers who are dedicated to your project and also have the needed skills to yeah, work on it in a good uh, yeah, speed and in a good way. So in the beginning, with my game, I wasted so much time and money in unreliable developers and I also needed to restart the development process there multiple times since the code was not clean or optimized or well documented and when then a developer yeah left the project or something like that it was almost impossible for other developers to pick up the work again there and yeah create some sort of like a well optimized and, and working game basically so this was a very painful experience back then so at that point i really decided to get good in the development area myself and hire the best people there to build up some sort of like a studio and assist my clients that they don't need to make the same mistakes i did back then so we together can build out their dream games and here we are now <laughs> And this leads to my next point, setting realistic expectations. A mistake I made at first and a lot of beginners also make is thinking they can make a professional game on their own or with little help from some developers who maybe assist a bit here and there for free or like uh, less paid or something like that. And those are often also people who are also still learning Unreal Engine. And yeah, there's nothing wrong to learn new th uh, new things together there, but you can't expect to get an optimized, well-working game out there you can like sell later or something like that. If you yeah, want to approach everything like this, it will be a little bit like I did it back then, because I also didn't have the, bu the budget and all that stuff in the beginning to like yeah, hire a 10-man team or something like that to work on my game. You will have the similar headaches like I had back then that people yeah, will randomly quit the project or that, that the response times are very slow and all that stuff. So when you are really looking forward to like publish a game and also want to earn some money with it, that's not the best way you can go there basically. Because here's the reality, it's hard to keep going if you try to do it all alone or with unpaid or unskilled workers. People who are yeah, working for free often leave when they get busy or get better paid projects or something like this. And all this can ruin your progress. 
So you need to pick up the development work there somehow, and this will be often very hard since the code is not optimized or well documented. That's why the role of the developer is one of the most important roles in the full process where everything can fall with basically. That's why you should find the best working conditions and also payment methods with them so they can fully dedicate to your projects to also stay there in the long run with you basically. So we will talk in detail about this later, but game development rarely follows a strict plan. New things always will come up since new plugins and assets are getting released daily which could enhance or speed up the workflows. Or also new ideas from the clients came up and changes are needed to get implemented. And there will be surprises along the way, no matter how good you will yeah, have the game planned out and everything. That's why paying developers based on their hourly rates can work better here. But well, let me explain under which conditions this should happen. So they can't scam you by entering more hours they have actually worked or something like this. However, most people prefer fixed prices since they can yeah, better plan with it and all that stuff. But let me explain you the reality from a game developer's point of view. Developers providing you those fixed prices after just a few chat messages about your project. They can't really estimate the amount of work there. Normally you would need to analyze your project or the current code you already have. This will maybe take a few days depending on the size of it and then they would need to check if there are like, for example, asset packs on the marketplace, which could speed up the development process, which also something most people don't do since this speed up the development time so much that they earn less money with it basically. But all in all, then they would need to plan out a roadmap um, how the new features can get implemented in a good way there. And this is such a time consuming process most developers don't do in the beginning since they also don't even know if everything in the end will be in the budget of the client. So the developers just randomly guess any number, add some money on top and pray to stay in the budget there later when they yeah, will get to start the work there on the project. And like this, those fixed prices are not only overpriced sometimes, when devs add too much additional budget there, they also can lead to rushed work or lower quality work when they run out of the budget. While most developers on freelancer platforms like Fiverr and all that stuff just want to like communicate over chat. We always also do a quick meeting to discuss about the project in more details to take a better estimate there. And good developers usually offer some sort of like monthly support packages, which can get customized to the client's needs. What I mean with this is a flexible development approach where you block the developer for X amount of hours on a monthly basis. This don't need to be some sort of like a subscription or something like that, but it's like already a agreement or something like that, that you need X amount of hours per month to work on your project. And this can then of course continue over the next like months or something like that. Like this, the developer can block the time in the calendar already and just can fully focus to work on your project. So you can get the quality work and also fast replies there. This approach comes with much more benefits for the clients and the devs, but we will talk a bit more about this later. I hope this already helped you to understand that it don't make sense to ask for some sort of like fixed prices from the start is often a mistake because developers who give you a set price might make it extra high. So also to cover their risks and all that stuff, or they might give a too low price and then have to cut out uh, like quality later or ask for more and more payments down the line to continue their work, which will also end up to be way more expensive than going directly with a professional developer. So being in a mindset here to like save money or something like that absolutely don't make sense. Then you maybe can't even afford like to hire a developer or something like that. You really need to work with reliable people there. Otherwise the full process is screwed from the beginning. I also noticed many developers also take too many projects at once. And like this, they can't also give your project the attention it deserves. And this can cause like long delays until new features getting implemented, also delays or long waiting times for answers or like chat messages and all that stuff, which can really slow down the progress there. However, one common concern I hear often is that people often got scammed before a bit with this hourly approach. And this is really sad to hear 
because we, for example, track our time using Clockify so we can give a monthly report there. And we also provide daily video and image updates. And in meetings, we can also openly talk about the things we have worked on and where also roadblocks were or something like that and how we can solve them in the most efficient way possible, basically. And when you have such an open communication with your developers, you can even as a beginner understand if the time was used in a good way or if people scammed you. And a setup like this you also should do with your developers to ensure a good remote work based on hourly rates to also get the support you need there for your project. Because especially if you are starting as a beginner, you might also get some sort of like additional coaching and consulting here and there to like keep track um, to yeah lead your game to success basically later. I hope this gives you already a better overview and idea of what game development really takes. It's a big project which needs to get planned out properly and you need not only a developer on your side there in most cases, but also some sort of like a mentor who is yeah on your side and guide you with the next steps and all that stuff. Especially if you're starting or or don't came out of the gaming industry and when this is your first game a uh, yeah, person on your side there who will guide you is definitely a good thing there and trying to do everything alone there or doing it too cheaply will almost always end in frustration and in our next video we will dive deeper into what it takes to make the first version there of your game and we will also talk a bit more about the planning process and the development processes we use to deliver quality work at scale. But that's it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a like there and thank you very much for watching. But that's it. Have a nice rest of your day. Take care.